And what's up everybody? Welcome, welcome to the Manga Grove. My name is Krisha and this is today's chain link. Bitcoin and Ethereum analysis video. Now, I figured I'd add Ethereum into the mix, okay? Because, well, Ethereum has actually been trending really, really well. And I know that many of you, many of you have been actively trading Ethereum. So, um, why the hell not, eh? But uh, let's start off with the trend trading dashboard because I want to see what the trend is telling us on all three of those coins. Now, Bitcoin did flip short yesterday. And since then, we are down about 4.04%, right? So, um, that's still intact. That is still short. Ethereum is long. Now, this long call was given about two weeks ago. Since then, Ethereum is up about 10.9%. So, that one really panned out um so that's pretty good and link is right here link usd once again long still long it was long yesterday as well but uh, this call too was given about two weeks ago since then it is up 34.5 percent so that's also pretty neat and what the hell is 40 percent here Holy moly, guys, Tezos. Tezos is up 40 freaking percent. And this call was given about 19 days ago. Okay, so this is interesting. Now, I know that many of you did... Um you know, have been requesting a TA video on Tezos. Now, because of this, I think I may actually... I may actually post a Tezos video, however, I won't include it here. I will probably just post an individual video later on today, okay, if there is time. And by the way, guys, for those of you who have signed up for the Mango Trend Analysis Dashboard, you guys will be receiving your early bird coupon codes today, okay? So make sure to keep an eye out on that, on your inbox for those coupon codes. And um, well, for those of you who have not signed up yet and you are interested in getting your hands on the dashboard, I suggest you get on to www.mangoresearch.com slash get hyphen dashboard and you can find all the information you need on the dashboard okay and at the end of it there's a nice cute little sign up form now we do release this week there will be a free version as well as a premium version if you're someone who is just trading as a hobby i think the free version will suffice however if you are looking to take your trading seriously and you want that extra edge I think premium is the way to go, okay? But uh, yeah, guys, if you want to be kept in the loop as to when we release, just sign up right here and I will keep you in the loop, okay? So um, with that out of the way, let's get onto the charts. Now, here we are, guys, Bitcoin on that hourly time frame, and what do we have here? And this is exactly what I was talking about yesterday. I mean, it panned out to the T, eh? But um, I, was, I first started off by telling you about this beautiful inverted head and shoulders. Okay, now we did have a break to the upside. The yellow horizontal line here was the measured move. But what did we see after that? Notice where price got rejected. We got rejected here at around 7,191. But there was that one level from yesterday's video, which I will link above, that I was telling you guys about. And that was the top of this green box territory. I said that, hey guys, this is massive resistance. Okay, 7,175, to be extremely specific, was massive resistance overhead it had confluence from the daily time frame going all the way up to the weekly time frame okay so that was too much resistance up there and so that whoever did catch that short that was a beautiful beautiful short and congratulations to you i know quite a few of the guys up in the mango seed program did catch that one however i believe um quite a few of them actually caught it on the divergence and this is where there's also confluencing factors when it's a strong trade right so not only was it a major, major line of resistance, it was also a double divergence play. It was a double bearish divergence play on Bitcoin on the hourly time frame. Like you have this, you have your Stokes sloping downward, okay, Slope, Stokes and RSI, okay, and then you have price going up. That was a double divergence play. That was a beautiful, beautiful trade to be had. I know Sean caught this one, and, and I know a couple, of, a few of the other guys who also caught this trade. Unfortunately, I was asleep. I mean, I gotta get my beauty, beauty sleep in, man. Um, but no, this was a beautiful trade to be had for um, whoever, whoever who caught this one, right? But uh, notice how we got rejected on the top of that green box territory as I was anticipating. Okay, so that's what's happening on the hourly time frame. I don't want be spending too much time on those lower ones the lower time frames because uh, 
I feel like the real play, guys, is on these, on the higher ones, okay, on the higher time frames. That's what I'm, I'm gonna be looking at. That's where I will be looking to take my plays on. Now, um, Bitcoin, as you guys know, did not close over the green box territory. Okay, we did get rejected at the top of that green box territory, as anticipated. But uh, another thing that everyone seems to be looking at, quite a few guys in the, um, in the mango seat as well as in the Grove chat, have been looking at is this beautiful symmetrical triangle now the thing is that i don't know if it is a symmetrical triangle and i'll tell you why okay i'm not seeing the volume i'm the, the, there's a certain sort of volume profile i'm looking for um when it comes to a symmetrical triangle okay and this volume right here throws it off okay i'm usually looking for a descending profile but then you have these kind of nodes just sticking out right there so i'm i'm unsure about it okay i do not know for sure but um, i'm uncertain as to whether or not this is a symmetrical triangle however um sean did point out something to me he said if you go on to the two day time frame i think you'll find the, the the volume profile you're looking for which is a descending volume profile and he's actually right there okay so it is kind of more visible on the um on those higher time frames but this is a symmetrical triangle that many many of you are looking at am i going to be playing it personally no because i'm uncertain about it okay when i'm uncertain about a pattern i do not play it however what i will be playing it on is just the horizontals so now we have identified two major horizontals sorry one major horizontal the one on top overhead resistance at 7175 top of the green box territory and like i and like i said guys nothing has changed from yesterday nothing much at least as soon as we start closing daily and two-day candles over that region i will be looking to get into a long position okay now that's what i'm going to be doing in terms of whether if if bitcoin does have to make a push to the upside if the picture starts looking bullish, I will be looking for candle body closes over that 7,175 region, okay? That combined with, I wanna see price start taking out um, like things like the three day 200 simple moving average, okay? Now we do close a three day candle tomorrow and I will be watching out for that. I want to see if price can close a candle over the three day 200 simple moving average like we had one here but we got faked out dropped below the 200 and we have been using it as resistance for the past nine days now now we do close this one tomorrow and i want to see if we can actually take that out but notice how the 200 simple moving average is not in line with the top of the green box territory okay i will not be taking my long as soon as we break that i will the the final break for me is going to be the green box territory okay as you can see it lines up with the three day kijun and that three day 21 ema isn't too far either so i will be looking for price to be closing over that in order for me to start getting into a long position but um i think this this two day 200 moving average also has quite a bit of significance if you just put it on and go and back test it on your three-day time frame you'll see what it is that i am talking about um, but i think that that is going to be the first tell on whether or not bitcoin wants to pop from here okay so that's what i'm going to be looking for on the bullish side of things on the bearish side well <sighs> rejection 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 if we do end up breaking well this region right here okay this is 6786 i'm saying we make a further sort of push to the downside meeting the next zone of support at 6395 but you know what let's humor everyone's um call on the uh, symmetrical triangle okay for a second because let's see if it does like it does have i i can't you know refuse the fact that it does does have the right volume profile on those um, on those higher time frames like the two day but let's say that um, it is in fact a symmetrical triangle okay this is it right here that's the upper sort of trend line and I believe this is the lower trend line and uh, let's go ahead put on our volume notes okay and um, yeah I think it's got the right volume on the two day at least and let's just say that this is in fact a symmetrical triangle and we do break to the, to the downside. Where does this measured move take us to? It takes Bitcoin to 5,404, give or take. I know that's super, super specific, but I'm just literally reading numbers right off of my scale. But I uh, know that is the measured move, 5,400, okay? And uh, yeah, I mean, 
Ah, it's going to be an if this then that, guys. I mean, Bitcoin is not making it easy for anybody right now. So you have to be you have to be unbiased in your approach. Okay, that's what I would recommend everyone doing. It's a very, very fuzzy picture. But the worst thing that could happen right now is us being caught off guard. What I am noticing on, well, social media as well as many other TG consortiums out there, right? A lot of trading groups and stuff is that a lot of people are more bearish than they are bullish. And it's like a lot of them are averse to hearing the bullish case. And I don't think that's prudent, to be honest. I don't think that's prudent at all. It's good to keep a more holistic view, an unbiased view on what Bitcoin wants to do. That's what I will be doing here. I am trying to approach this with as little bias as possible. Okay, I'm also looking for an up case right here a bullish case and my bullish case like i said is going to be us taking out the green box territory and notice how the green box territory is also in line with the top of this potential symmetrical triangle okay so we have that we have the green box territory we have the three day 200 simple moving average with the 21 ema right there and the kijun like there's a lot sitting on that level and if we do break it for the second time i will expect further continuation to the upside however if we break this this um region of support right here at 6792 which is also the bottom okay of that uh, of that symmetrical triangle i think the next most immediate region of support is going to be at so let's put on our weekly right here uh 6393 which also lines up with a monthly level okay however guys the worst case if this is in fact a symmetrical triangle worst case scenario is this right here um 5400 um could bitcoin slip lower of course i mean we'll have to kind of it's always an if this than that we'll have to see what price is doing around that range to really make a you know a good forecast on that um but yeah this is all i have for you for bitcoin now let's move on to link Okay, so this is Link on that four hour time frame. Now, today we're only going to be going over the USD pairings for both Link and Ethereum. Okay, so that way you get, um, I think those are the more important kind of pairs if you really want to understand what, you know, the two cryptocurrencies want to do. You always, you always should be looking at the USD pairing because that's going to dictate. Okay, so um, this is link for you on the four hour time frame. Now, in my video from yesterday, I did highlight this beautiful symmetrical triangle. We did break to the upside. And uh, I believe this yellow line right here was the measured move. So Link did meet the measured move of this beautiful symmetrical triangle. Um, and here's what I, I told you from yesterday, um, that if we do, now I did post this video right before we closed or slightly after actually we closed the 12 hour candle. And I said that, hey, if we do end up taking out the 10 simple moving average, okay, which was right around here, if we take that out, chances are we are going to in fact meet the measured move at around three dollars and 74 cents right so and what do you know we did get that but we actually got rejected right off of there which got me thinking i'm like what if there's something else at play here what if there is a potential rising wedge at play Okay, now once again, this is going to be a potential rising wedge. We'll have to wait for um, price to further flesh this one out. Um, it is not, it has not come into play yet, but usually a rising wedge pattern is a bearish pattern. Okay, a lot of people look at it as a bearish pattern and this is still yet to be fleshed out. So this is very, very premature right now. But um, this is what I'm seeing. Now question is, you know, where do we go from here? Now let's just say that this actually does end up playing out where does this take um chain link to this will take chain link to this region right here two dollars and 74 cents okay that is quite a big drop if that does end up playing out now the thing with link is that it's super freaking volatile like look at that that's 22 percent to the downside i mean i mean but that's how it also went up right as soon as it starts breaking some major levels like um this one right here i think breaking this line of support at three dollars and 43 cents will make price go down pretty damn fast okay so um that's one key area of volatility that um, Chainlink has. As soon as we break $3.43, I think it's going to go down pretty damn fast. Um, and also another key area is, would I look at it as this one? Um, 
No, actually, I think that is this is the biggest kind of zone of volatility. If we do end up closing below two dollars and ninety five cents, I will be expecting a further continuation all the way, meeting the measured move of this potential rising wedge at two dollars and seventy five cents. I think it still is more bullish than it is bearish. You guys know exactly what it is that I am looking out for if I am looking for a downtrend on link. I am looking for a link to lose that 21 EMA. I want to see consecutive four hour candles close underneath that 21 EMA and hold it as resistance. Okay, and I believe that breaking, breaking this, this bottom trend line right here will be propelling link further to the downside. Okay, I will be expecting a break of this horizontal and then a further push. But I don't, th I think this is going to be a very, very quick push to the downside. So um, definitely watch out for that. But I think right now for those of, you know, it's it's an okay territory. It's I think it's a neutral territory right now. And why I say neutral is that because it's been putting in on the four hour time frame at least. It's been putting in these lower highs, you know, like look at that. So um, I, I don't I don't want to see that if I'm if I'm looking for a further continuation to the upside, I want to see links start showing some strength in terms of taking out the previous high and it has not done that. So I believe this did put in a new lower high. And um, if we do have further continuation to the downside, I think this is going to end up breaking. So uh, definitely watch out for that. And um, yeah, I mean, Link is in neutral territory for as long as we're holding that four hour 21 EMA. Okay, now uh, let's move on to F because F has been moving very, very well. Now, for those of you who actively play F, now tell me if you've noticed this about F, okay? Tell me in the comments below. But I genuinely believe that F plays very, very well off of its horizontals, okay? If I had to gun to my head, if I had to pick one indicator to play F on, it would actually just be support and resistance. Like, I'm just gonna go ahead, pan on over to the weekly, okay? And notice how F has oscillated so well on its support and resistance lines. And while this may look very, very small, guys, these are major chunks of price action. Like, this is 24%, okay? This right here is, what is this, 31%. Like, these are big, fat, chunky profitable zones to be had and the best thing about F is that you can go long on it okay as well as you can take a short right because it's one of the major cryptocurrencies offered on margin on various exchanges of course if you do not have a, a risk management system in place i don't recommend going ham on the margin but uh, i mean F is a beautiful chart to to be trading right now especially trading on those horizontals but um this is what i'm seeing if f closes a weekly candle over that 190 region okay 190 if we close a weekly candle i will be expecting a further push to the upside okay the maximum on that zone is at 248 dollars i will be looking for a stutter stop at around two dollars and eleven cents Okay, which is right around here. This too, guys, while it looks small on the screen, what is this? Let's go ahead and do the measure move. That's 10% to the upside. Okay, nothing to be scoffed at. Taking this out will be propelling Ethereum further on to that $248 region. Okay, so um, that's what I will be looking out for on that next weekly close for Ethereum. But let's get on to those lower time frames and see what it's doing relative to its, um, you know, its cloud and um, EMAs and stuff. Let's see what it's doing on the status quo. So we are currently within that 12 hour cloud. Now notice how we did a beautiful edge to edge. Currently price is sitting above that um, that two day 21, uh, sorry, the 12 hour 21 EMA, where are we relative to, to the 10? We are also sitting above the 10 simple moving average. Okay, so now question is, can we move up further from here? And I want you to notice this horizontal right here. Now this horizontal, the yellow one that I just showed you is a weekly horizontal. Okay, and notice how it's lining up so well with the top of the 12 hour cloud, right? And if you just go on to the daily, I believe it's, it has confluence on the daily as well. That is the daily top of the cloud as well, okay? And um, on the daily time frame, 
Ethereum is being held down by the Keijun here, so that is something to take note of. If you're looking for what the cloud is telling us, I mean, the cloud is red. We have a bearish TK cross. Let's put off all, all our lines. We have a bearish TK cross. We haven't crossed bullish yet. However, price is trending. You know, price is on a clear uptrend here on the daily. So something to note. But um, if we do end up taking out the top of this cloud, I will be looking for further continuation to the upside. Okay, but right now the, the cloud is printing a rather bearish picture for as long as price remains underneath the, the daily cloud okay i believe it'll still be in neutral zone i want to see a push above that daily cloud um but no notice how the monthly zone is also lining up with the top of the daily cloud so some major conf confluence there two day time frame what do we have on that two day so two day time frame once again that monthly level is in line with the two day kijun now i noticed something very interesting on this chart i noticed how the cloud turned green here for a you know a split moment and then turned red again so i found that pretty um i'm like huh okay maybe it's something to watch out for okay so uh, usually the cloud kind of you know it's a good forecast indicator it tells you where the trend wants to go and notice how we have a fuzzy bearish tk cross here okay so that is still in bearish territory once again the cloud is printing a bearish picture and uh yeah i mean analysis is still the same here we need to first take out this 190 region right even on the two-day time frame what about the three-day anything there on the three-day three-day time frame oh that is a bearish candle guys holy moly that is a very bearish candle april 18th on the three-day snap and where do we get rejected off of once again that monthly 190 region so careful 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 there however notice one thing though um is that uh, price is still within that cloud i will only consider an edge to edge play on this if we manage to take out this Kijun. Once again, 190 region is sitting in line with that three-day Kijun. Okay, but guys, be careful. This was an extremely bearish candle. For those of you who are bullish on Ethereum, who are sitting in longs, watch out for how price reacts off of this region. This is going to be extremely important. $190. Okay, now this is what we have on the three-day. What about the four-day? Anything there on the four-day? Guys, this is too much here. <laughs> this is way too much. I mean, that is the Tenkin and the Kijun on the four-day as well, okay? So watch out, 190 again. Once again, a bearish candle there. Anything on the weekly? This will be too... Oh, my God. Holy moly. Weekly Tenkin, guys. Weekly Tenkin. So um, I'm sure you get the picture. And notice how we're going to be getting a bearish crossover on the 10 SMA as well as the 21 EMA. Watch out for that, too. Um, I think, gun to my head, I think we may very well get rejected here. So be careful. And I feel like the rejection would be the impetus of um, Ethereum actually breaking breaking out of this rising channel of sorts okay if we do end up breaking down from here the measured move of this rising channel would take like this is massive so the implications on this would be massive as well um but let's see where this takes us to okay say we break a couple of days from now whatever i mean it's four hour charts so this will take Ethereum down to $120, give or take. And if we do end up getting here, I will be looking for a, t a test of this monthly horizontal right here sitting at around $115. Okay, but keep an eye out on this region. This is going to be a very important $190. Okay, so yeah, that's all I have for you for Ethereum, Link, and Bitcoin. With that, guys, trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way, guys. Ciao.